the Yellowstone supervolcano region has another volcanic area, the Absarocas, which is a huge volcanic map, and a volcanic field right next to it. This is by USGS, and I'll leave you the link to this. The Yellowstone volcano receives ample attention for being large, active, caldera-forming volcanic system, and it's considered to be high threat. Now, given the massive eruptions over the last 2.1 million years, 1.3 and 640,000 years, those are the three latest super eruptions, our focus on Yellowstone is understandable, but hidden in this metaphorical shadow is another volcanic complex, the Absaroka volcanoes. And as we can see, they flank Yellowstone. Washburn Volcano, Lake Butte, Sunlight Volcano, Buffalo Bill Dam, all these things that you can see from the map, Creek Group, Sunlight Group, Washburn Group. Now, uh, this is from the Caldera Chronicles, and it's a February 15, 2021 issue. The Absaroka volcanoes were active 53 to 43 million years ago after the uplift of the Rocky Mountains, but before the geologically recent arrival of the Yellowstone hotspot about 2 million years ago, comprising the park's eastern boundary and running 165 miles. Kindly support my Patreon account since YouTube has again demonetized my YouTube channel. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below. The Absaroka Volcanic Field runs 165 miles in length between Livingston, Montana and Du Bois, Wyoming, and 60 miles across from Lake Butte Overlook in the eastern quarter of Yellowstone National Park to Buffalo Bill Dam in Wyoming. The modern-day Absaroka Mountains are the remnant of an even more massive volcanic field. So you can understand this whole area is volcanic. It is also an area that stretches between the um, Great Lake mantle plume and this mantle plume under Yellowstone. Now, the, uh, combin the combined volume of material from Absaroka volcanoes exceeds that of Yellowstone Plateau several times over. Yet the Absaroka volcanoes are relatively overlooked in comparison to Yellowstone. Well, maybe we should be paying attention to what's going on there as well, because in the top part of the Absaroka volcanic map in Montana, that's where we've been having a lot of um, weird um, quake swarms. A lot of people believe that it's from mining or quarries, but it could be because of the fact that we have, that's the sunlight group up there. Now, um, stretching into Montana. Now, the Absaroka volcanoes are relatively overlooked. The uh, Absaroka volcanics were a component of Yellowstone volcanism. Then a, grade, a graduate student, though, in the 1950s discovered that the Absaroka volcanism preceded that of Yellowstone by over 50 million years. Perhaps the most notable difference between Yellowstone and the Absaroka volcanics is their starkly different topography. Yellowstone is a caldera forming system where subsidence of the ground, deposition of ash, and then placement of lava flows contributed to sweeping landscapes. The Absaroka, however, are comprised of several volcanic centers with lava flows, solidified magma, and overlying sedimentary rocks, subsequently eroded by wind, water, and ice over tens of millions of years. This rugged range hosts 123 peaks over 11,500 feet, 47 of which are over 12,000 feet high. Hence, it is of little surprise that Mount Washburn, the most visited peak in Yellowstone National Park, is above 10,000 feet, and Eagle Peak, the highest point in the park, is 11,371 feet, are remnants of Absaroka volcan volcanoes. The difference in topography and elevation between Yellowstone and the Absarokas directly contribute to the difference attention the different attention they receive the lower elevation and flatter terrain in much of yellowstone national park lend towards greater accessibility to study its natural wonders compared to the absarokas which are mountains also most of absaroka volcanoes 
fall within design, designated national wilderness where roads are prohibited and low level air travel is permitted only for emergencies. Add that the Absaroka volcanoes have not been active for over 40 million years and it becomes easier to understand why Yellowstone grabs most of the attention. This is not to say that the Absaroka volcanoes are not worthy of study. The sediments of Absaroka contain fossils that provide a window to observe the flora, fauna, and climate from several million years ago. For example, petrified trees are preserved in Absaroka mudflows. The Absarokas also offer a means of, uh, to traverse dissected volcanic complexes and understand processes still underway today. For example, this environmental uh, environment provides a natural laboratory to study volcanic landslides. Hart Mountain experienced the world's largest above water landslide 48.9 million years ago. What can we learn from this event? How can we increase public safety and design more robust infrastructure in volcanic ranges? In 2004, Yellowstone National Park was forced to close its east entrance after a landslide inundated the road at Sylvian Pass. What are the similarities between landslides at Hart Mountain and Sylvian Pass? What factors contributed to the events? Can we learn anything about the likelihood of reoccurrence at Sylvian Pass from Hart Mountain or other Absaroka volcanoes? The origin of the Absaroka volcanoes remains a subject of study. The chemistry of Absaroka lava and ash is usually associated with plate boundaries that produce volcanic arcs where one plate subducts beneath another, like beneath the Cascades, the Andes, and the Aleutian Islands. However, the Absaroka volcanoes are nearly 1,000 miles, seemingly too far from the nearest subduction zone. An alternative explanation is that the Absarokas were produced during a period of regional extension in which magma was brought to the surface by a process known as decompression melting as tectonic forces pull the land apart. However, regional extension is not usually associated with the volcanic rock chemistry observed in the Absarokas. Suffice it to say, additional studies would benefit our understanding of the region and lend credence to the origins of the Absaroka volcanoes. This is on uh, by USGS, Caldera Chronicles for Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, February 15, 2021. So you can see that this whole area of Yellowstone, even to the uh, under the mountains, uh, under the um, uh, mountains ranges near uh, flanking northeast, are all volcanic fields, Montana and Wyoming. Thank you for your support and please leave your comments. Thank you.